Sairam everyone. Um, a happy auspicious Aradhana day to everyone. It's nice to uh, read the Gita Vaini on this auspicious day. Um, I, I was absent for a couple of weeks, but I got some summary and some questions. So I spent some time reading and uh, also listening to some of the conversations. And I think uh, maybe I will just address some of them to the best of knowledge. Brother, brother we move, Sairam, before we move on to the study circle, why don't you tell about your trip, brother? Because that's also on an auspicious day, you can share with us the Adhirutra. Thank you, Sairam. There's nothing much to say, sister, but it's an opportunity. Um, I think it, let me answer the question and then I will go to that. Okay, because that's also related to this. Because sometimes we try to understand and we try to do things. Okay, so um, I think the first question is, um, I, I, I'm going to listen to read uh, Sister Armada's uh, summary and uh, go over the questions if you don't mind. Um, Hopefully I don't take too much time. If I'm talking too much, just stop me. As I think the, when Swami compares Eastern Varnas with the Western classification, not by birth, but by karma, is he saying that we need to go back to the olden ways? I think um, that's the first question. The first, I think um, Swami is very, very clear. If you read the chapter, uh, previous chapter, in which he's saying Bharat is lucky to have the system. I think that's a very clear statement by Swami. And Krishna says, I am the one who designed and defined, and that's the way it should be. Um, but the reality, this Varna exists in the West also. It is just that in the East, in India, it is decided by birth. Whereas in the West, by just activity. People's engagement in activity, that's how it's decided. So what Swami says is whether the Varna system in an organized manner exists or not, it exists in the West also. That's all he has said. But he is saying that Bharat has to go back to its roots. I think he's very, very clear about it. And then the question comes, is there no progress forward? You know, all that, those questions will come. And how, how do we go back? What Varna do we belong? All these questions will come up. And I think Swami is letting us decide for ourselves how we sort this out. And I think the first thing Swami says is don't criticize. Because the reality is in India, it still exists. The Varna system exists by birth. Then the question comes, uh, isn't, isn't Swami saying by our guna, our karma, Varna should be decided? Okay. I understand, you know, I think we all say, you know, guna has to, yes, that is what decides uh, varna and karma only decides varna. But then who will decide is a big question mark. Am I to say I am a Brahmin from today and declare that I am a Brahmana because I have all the gunas and I, I have, I am doing, engaged in uh, Brahmana thing, I should become a Brahmana. Am I qualified to, de uh, you know, declare? Or who is qualified to declare? Is the question. People will say, oh, this person is good, this person is a Brahmin. The thing is, a Brahmin can say this person is a Brahmin. Okay, if at all. Because, you know, if uh, a peer review, peer review is needed. You know, if a doctor is... Uh, any in any 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 academic work or anything professional work, a professional body of people who exist already in that have to acknowledge. Majority of them, you know, just if you put it that way. In the Western world, that's what they should do. 
But then as when, what about India? You know, it's so much discrimination. No one understands that we all take birth because of our karma. Who decides in which family and which circumstances we should be born? God makes the decision. The difference between Bharat and the Western world or the other world is in Bharat, the, the rebirth is a concept which is accepted. So we all progress over many lifetimes. So in one lifetime, if we are put in particular Varna, because God or our karma has decided that we should be born in a certain family, in a certain circumstances, that's it. But then we want to jump the queue. We want to break away halfway and say, declare that I want to become a Brahmin because I think I am a Brahmin. I think in this point, I will give an example. It's a personal example. Uh, so in 1979, um, our college was established. Uh, there were only 60 students. I wanted to be a music boy. You know, I wanted to sing bhajans. I was not selected for singing in the mandir for bhajan. So I could not be in the bhajan group. So I was forced to pick the next best alternative to get the opportunity with Swami, which is chanting Vedam. A few of us, five or six of us were chant, you know, put our hands up and became Vedam boys. And I got to learn from uh, Kama Vadani Garu and so on. So I used to chant uh, Vedas for before those days, before every special function, we used to chant. Before the function starts, uh, Swami will call, the, call us and we will go and chant. So that was the practice. Among all of them, I was a non Brahmin. All the others had, you know, the sacred thread. And, you know, when the annual sacred thread change comes, they will all go and you know, Swami will bless them and all that. I was the only fellow. So what happened after first year, those fellows said, you are not a Brahmin, the others asked me. Then I felt a bit slighted because, you know, they felt, okay, this guy is a Shudra, but he's also chanting Vedas. But they, nobody could stop because that's Swami's, because Swami wanted everyone to learn, everyone to chant. So in 1983, Swami told the boys, he, once he came and said, all the students who, are, who have to do their... Uh, Thread ceremony. If you are not uh, done, uh, Swami will do it this time. So all the boys, Brahmin boys wrote home, you know, Swami is performing and their parents were coming. So we also wrote home to our parents said, Swami is doing this uh, please come. You can also ask. So they came, my parents came. Uh, that year happened to be my father's birthday, 50th birthday uh, on March 9th, 1983. Uh, Swami called us, our family, for an interview. So we all trooped in. And uh, Swami was talking to us. And then Swami is what do you want? Of course, he, so he knew, I guess, you know, what we wanted. So um, I took a bit of a lead because I was among the three brothers. I was the one who was learning with it. So I said, Swami, uh, we would like you to do our Yatnyo Upavitam, threat ceremony for us also. Swami said, Chah. That is not your tradition. That is for them, it is tradition, so it's okay. They will, for them, it's fine. For you all, it's not necessary. And, you know, we were crestfallen. My father, of course, he said, Swami, uh, yes, fine, but can you do us Gaya Tripadesh? We don't know how to chant. Swami said, I will see. So, about eight days later, uh, which was March 17th, um, I happened to sit in the stage actually in the Purna Chandra Auditorium because I was one, one of the boys who were not uh, getting sacred that time, but I was a Vedam boy, so I got to sit on the stage. I was very sad that I was not becoming a Brahmin. Okay, but uh, Swami, that, that year Swami took asked for the mic, and on the mic Swami chanted three times, which is the recording which everyone of you have and listen to. So that's what happened. So it took me a long time to understand because why didn't Swami make me a Brahmin? I am chanting Vedam, I've learned Vedam, I'm very, very active in it. But he didn't make me a Brahmin. It was a very it was it was something which was bothering me for quite a while. But then I realized Swami wants us to learn the Vedas. Understand the meaning and also chant and use it as a way of prayer. 
that does not become I short circuit the system and suddenly say I'm a Brahmin. Okay, um, so I think that's very, very important. Um, so I will just now comment on the Atirudram. Uh, I went to Sacramento because it was the first Atirudram organized. I went to take part because Rudram chanting is always beneficial. I got to chant 121 times, so a little more of Rudram while being there, maybe about 150 times Rudram over a period of six days, five, six days. So which was a blessing. And there were everyone who came have been learning for a long time and chanting. So it is sitting among them and chanting is a wonderful experience. Um, but then, you know, the, there was a bit of, I think I would say, because every, they, everyone was called Ritvik, uh, you know, and we all were considered, you know, everyone, many people were feeling that they are, part, you know, Acharyas, you know, Ritviks, and so on, sitting, and which is okay. But the reality is, I think we should, we should, uh, because in Parthi, the way when Swami conducts it, even though we all learnt Vedam, he will invite the proper acharyas who are brahmins who are well trained and even among them swami will test make sure that they all chant well and then only they chant so some of the system swami does not want to be disrupted but that does not give any uh, us the it does not uh, um, avoid our, our opportunity to learn which swami opened up and everyone can learn veda and use it for personal sadhana and do whatever you all can do with but that does not necessarily mean we declare ourselves of a different varna just ourselves declaring it that's my understand and um, if if we are qualified enough maybe in the next life you get to be one there i think that's the idea but and i think if you read dharma vaini swami has also said just because you belong to one varna does not mean that you cannot reach god you know, everyone has equal chance to spiritually progress. So we should, and none of these varnas are higher or lower. I think on these things, Swami is very, very categorical. Uh, which is the negative which has crept in? Because some people felt we are of higher class, someone else is of a lower class. That kind of thing, Swami wants us to remove. But we should respect our birth, the karma, with which we are born and we should be happy god has decided when we were born which family we should be born in and for this life just be in that mode and do sadhana uh, and you should understand both krishna and swami are non, no, no they are not brahmins <laughs> and they are saying so you can't say this is a, this is a brahmins have been thrusting this on everyone that is the theory which people say. And I think that's, um, I think second question also is answered, uh, Narmada. Uh, intercaste marriage. I think that was the next one. Uh, because marriage, according to Sanatana Dharma, is not because I like another person. You know, I like, I look like the looks, so I, you know, we got to know them. Uh, we know everything. Actually, people who are married for even 50 years will tell that you don't know the partner very well. Because every day you are learning something new about the person. That's a reality. So, in Sanatana Dharma, marriage was a ritual which is to keep maintaining the Dharma. So, they had joint families. They don't have nuclear families. Uh, there are many things in the Sanatana Dharma system where marriage was considered to continue the lineage and also the keep up the dharma so the parents of similar families with similar traditions they bring come together and arrange a marriage so everyone knows how to maintain this tradition because the wife also should know the husband also should know the tradition if both one of them does not know you cannot maintain tradition the knowledge is lost dharma is lost so this is the understanding. And Swami says, you know, Swami in a couple of talks, he has said, because Swami said there is only one religion, religion of love. Now many of the students are now trying to say, 
Swami has said all religions are one. I can marry a Christian. I can marry somebody. Nothing wrong. Swami said, look here. Uh, religion is one. But there's culture, no? Culture is slightly different. So you have to give equal importance to that also. So Swami is very particular. Um, Swami can do things just because Swami, you know, there are some places Swami has done different things, but we are not qualified as Swami is for intercaste marriages. That's my understanding. And Swami is very, very particular about these things uh, because he wants the system to be uh, refined and maintained, tradition to be maintained. Uh, because he says, Rishis have, I think he has said, Rishis who are very, very knowledgeable, who had great foresight, have established these things. Uh, anyone on the street should not question it without proper understanding and so on. So that's my understanding. I will stop here. I, I'm very, very sorry. I took up too much time, I guess. No, no. no. But yeah. I, I will address. Sairam. 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 Um, can um, Narmada put up that uh, last week's uh, chat, uh, the place where we were reading? Yeah, here. Uh, I think we had a doubt about something here. Uh, um. Narmada, you remember? You remember somewhere we wanted to ask? <clears throat> it was the Eastern Western Varnas, no? That no, a... no, no. There was something form and nature, form and uh, yes. uh, name. I something before that. Yeah. I believe. And, uh, next, next um, slide. Next slide. We did. We finished this one. Yeah, I think we you read the next one also. This is uh, this yeah, end next... of chapter eight, I think. No. Yeah. And so chapter nine, nine, you had started reading. Yeah. Number right. Yeah. Can you put put up yes, the was a question from uh, I think Anantya and uh, your Yeah. The, the that, that is in chapter nine. Yeah. Nine page eighty eight. Thank you. Can you put up that uh, here? Uh, did we did we read the coordination between the nature and its form? Ah, yes. that, that is where we nature and its form. If it has the form but not the nature, then it is unreal and false. This is where we had some doubt, uh, Arun, about that. So, I, from what I understand, okay, Swami said just because someone is born as a human being, mm. he can be called a human being. So, the form is of human being, but the nature is that of a human, not that of a human being. Um, this is the state for everyone in every Varna also. See, because uh, we are just, because the, I think we are put in a particular class so that we learn the subject. Uh, so the nature is usually lagging. Uh, Swami says, uh, uh, all human beings are Narasimhas. Uh, because we are bo with body of a human being, but with a lot of animal nature. Okay, so that is the avatar of Narasimha also. Uh, because we are human body, form is human, but the nature is animalistic, quite a bit. And so the form is given so that we, the, we work on the nature, so that nature can catch up with, our qualities can catch up with our form. So that's why Swami says, if it has a form but not the nature, then it is unreal, false. So even if I am born in as a Brahmana, if I am not... Uh, cultivating the Brahmanic tendencies more and more, then I am still a false Brahmana. Only in form I am a Brahmana. By nature, I am still not a Brahmana. Uh, so I think that applies to everyone. So what Swami says is, each class has no special limit, but I, so the thing is, as soon as you're born as a human being, Swami will say you have to cultivate human values. Only then you are qualified to call yourself a human being. So same thing applies to something like a Brahmana also, or a Vaishya, or a uh, Kshatriya. A Shudra means everyone else is classed as Shudras. Uh, they sort of, it's a catch-all bucket. Okay, so that's my understanding. I hope I answered. But Swami will say human values are equally important for all, all Varnas. On, in addition, see Swami, if you really look at there was a discourse, I think, in the late 60s. I, I cannot uh, recollect the year. The, if anyone wants, they can look up. Um, there's a discourse, Swami says, who is a Brahmin? That entire discourse about Brahmin. 
and swami says a brahmana has to have four things he should have knowledge of sanskrit he should have knowledge of vedas he should have lead a very austere life and he should do sadhana continuously these things give a person a brahmana qualification see even others who are not born as brahmana can practice these things but you know it's like you know in a in a office i am i am a, i have a manager on top or supervisor on top of me but you try to have to cultivate the qualities of a supervisor so that you will get the job of a supervisor so you know you you can learn the uh, subject uh, and all that because so ideally you should cultivate the nature and then you are given the form but god sometimes you know he you know if out of grace he will give you a little form but i think we have to work that is my understanding i hope i answer my understanding but not necessarily this is that is the understanding but it's my understanding so i'm just sharing sorry thank you thank you Uncle, um, last time you were on the phone, I think joining in near the end, we couldn't hear you. Can you repeat? Oh, your... I see. So, <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 because I was talking, but see, Swami says, under Sanadana Dharma, there are four pillars which maintain the society. Mm -hmm. They are called Janma, Karma, Dharma, and Brahma. Um, if you read, uh, look at any. discourse which swami has given during an uh, yagnopavitam or threat ceremony which he has conducted he would have definitely talked about this so in life we have to look at janma where we are born circumstances and all that the second one is karma our karma we should work on in such a way that it adheres to that through that we may manage maint uh, we protect the dharma and follow that dharma and through that we attain brahma okay this is a cycle and these four are important if we do that well in a particular life span in one lifetime then god decides okay where should i put this fellow next time uh, but you know our desires also come into play sometimes we don't want to let go of the people with whom we were already then so i will say what i can't do i can't promote you we have to stay in the same class then then you are born in the same class see sometimes we our own desires attachments also hold us back um so those are things which uh, i think so i wanted to say janma is because of the karma of previous lives okay so god decides according to sanatana dharma god decides which varna you should belong and he makes you born in a particular varna in a family so that's why so sometimes we are in a hurry we say swami give us a promotion now itself in the same class in mid year promotion you know like that in a class the, pro, the principal will say no you may be smart but next year i will give you double promotion but this year you have to be in the same class you can take some extra coaching uh, no problem if you want the teachers will give you some additional lessons no problem but you are still in the same class so that is what happens to many of us if we if we if we prove to the teacher that we are learning the teacher will give opportunities for us to learn uh, so so we should not ignore janma is also decision by god or based on our karma in the past okay so i just wanted to point that out that's all there must be a reason for anybody to be born in a family at a particular circumstances particular surroundings so swami knows that and then he puts us there exactly <laughs> and moreover uh, i wanted to add a, about one more point to that uh, you said you know culture is important that like not only cul cu culture of course is important and the food habits also yeah, food that habits is culture are, culture yeah. is all food and yeah, yeah, food habits also it, it comes there <laughs> that should coincide with each other's uh, likings the then only the inter caste marriages can work out in spite of that it sometimes it fails what to do <laughs> okay thank you thank you sairam this swami you can see swami is not very rigid here okay he is just telling us and he will let us do what we want you know god is very democratic that way you know he doesn't force 
but he says if you are interested in spiritual progress which basically ultimately it's contentment you know god has put me here i will be happy i will do what i have to and he will take care of me and the things like that. okay um uncle so how do um how do you reconcile then like um because you you talked about how all the different classes are equal it's not that one is better than the other but at the same time it seems like we should be trying to get a brahmin birth uh, you know it seems like there is a bit of a hierarchy like we should not we should, we should not. not even ask. see we should not ask we should leave it to god uh, it is up to him to decide where we are born he will he knows better see the whole problem i think starts when we think uh, we should belong to something so i will say wherever you are you do your job and then you do what you study and you are you can internally progress uh, why do you want external recognition mm -hmm. that others show others will say oh this fellow is not necessary we can progress from wherever we are uh, i think that's what matters and we should not as we think brahmin is better uh, no yes the opportunities maybe to learn some of the shastras is very high but swami will say devotion is equal that's why swami gave so much importance for devotion he says devotion is equally accessible to everyone uh, brahman brahmin has a better chance for jnana but swami will say that jnana can be given by god's grace for a person who is not in the brahmin family also you know there is a couple of padyams of swami swami will say pralada was born as a rakshasa nandanar was born in a low caste timma was uh, from a you know a jungle you know he was born the jungle so chabari you know what does he you know she can't even read and write but they all got god's grace so we should be striving asking for god's grace more than a promotion in varna is my understanding and and then how do you also reconcile like cuz swami has said we're all like born as shudras and then by the end of our life we should become Brahm brahmins or something like that yeah because you know how do you reconcile that with the what swami is saying here is that it is the side so fiber we can cultivate the brahmanic nature i think okay. which swami has outlined see i would consider say i was born in sri lanka uh, i am a shudra but i got some of the best uh, Uh, inter uh, opportunity to learn you know that i i consider swami's blessing uh you know to learn sanskrit to learn the vedas you know to learn from kamavadani garu uh, and to chant in front of swami you know i i must have prayed hard you know for that i think uh, so he said okay as a bonus i will give this fellow something now, that's the way i look at it you know we really don't know but i think swami is more interested in us improving ourselves brahmana is ultimately who is treading towards the path of brahman ultimately that is what it is more important that's more important than um, uh, it's it's like you know i don't need to be a doctor but i can uh, follow all the you know use use the knowledge of health and you know well being for running my own life and to manage people help people around me without prescribing uh, medicines you know that you know that kind of thing so you know you can be very health conscious you can eat well you can eat with knowledge all that's possible even though we are not practicing as a doctor okay so i think that is the, that's what swami wants us to be you know I, that's my understanding side so. so um if i understand correctly that when swami is saying we're all born as shudras it's more about our own internal um spiritual progress and growth but when swami is saying here that you are you know your caste is decided by birth it's referring to the external like a culture their relationship with society that kind of the yeah. classic example you know krishna is talking to arjuna who is a kshatriya but he is talking all brahmanical philosophy mm. it's the essence of upanishads which krishna is teaching to arjuna and he's saying after all that he says fight he didn't say you become a brahmana <laughs> you see He, he all this krishna is telling and then he is telling you should cultivate brahmanic qualities and then do your kshatriya job mm -hmm. you know i i think that's my understanding sairam brother 
as a follow up question now i am very clear about uh, what is the test of its identity who will give us the designation kind of who will give us the uh, the where we are and who we are kind of designation who will be giving us you have nicely explained our janma and karma and also it's given by god uh, why swami said that every object has certain limits if it it exceeds the limit so breaks through them it gets destroyed that means that even if i am a sutra and if i you know if i uh, maybe go over my limit and you know, the crossing my border and uh, you know, the go somewhere else whether then that uh, activity or that sort of uh, things it will give me some sort of uh, you know the the, the uh, unpleasant uh, experience or that is not good for me that kind of uh, understanding from that statement here uh, so my understanding sister uh, the concept of unemployment originates when the varna system breaks down because everyone wants to be either engineer or a doctor or a lawyer where they can make money sometimes they may not even have the necessary aptitude the parents want the children to study something because though you can make a lot of money or something like that so what happens is people are confused people are depressed everyone thinks you know i am not getting what i want to do all these thoughts so the whole problem is the entire life span is ending we are thinking about our job thinking which job should i apply you know i am not getting paid enough all these things then there is no time for spirituality because all spirituality has to be pursued when we are young and able bodied but when we are able bodied we are worried about job which job to get what job i should not get you know why am i not getting this of course it's confusion that is that is why there's so much turmoil uh, economic uh, impact you know disparities uh, inequality all that comes because of that so swami is saying it's all confusion <laughs> he does he, you know, he himself cannot fix it easily we have to slowly fix it i think that's my idea so that is why he says it's confusion because um, uh, yeah people people are confused that is my understanding sister Swami will say, whatever job which comes to you, just do it well. Don't run after this or that. If it feeds you, if it clothes you, you can stay in one place. That's more than enough. Just stick to it. Spend all your time in sadhana. Instead of that, we will may take additional courses so that I can get a promotion. Uh, things like all this. We waste so much time sometimes. So much time. And by the time we are done, we are too old to even read anything. You know, eyesight is bad, hearing is gone. And then we will think Shiva Shiva or Sai Ram, you know. What can we do? <laughs> I think that's why Sai Ram. Uh, also, you know, the little uh, question before we move. Who will, how I will identify my form and my nature is, uh, is coordinated or uh, who will identify that you know the, my form and the nature is in the is in the correct line or it is coordinated uh, maybe just you explained my form it could be the human my uh, nature could be animalistic or something else you know that's an example similarly you know the the uh, uh, the some of the example also yeah, the, it could apply to who will determine myself i will determine my form and my nature or someone else you know the beyond the you know the human uh you know the the ability god will determine my form and my nature or i will as an individual i will determine my form and my nature my own karma my own karma decides my form and my nature. Uh, whatever I do in this janma, in this birth, 
it will have its uh, effect on the future future births. That's what I feel. Uh, so I because I the best example, even in the same household, maybe three, four you know, the, the members would be you know, the, the living in that same household. Maybe two would be very spiritual, two would be you know, the, in the opposite way, two will be vegetarian, one will be you know, non-vegetarian. So even all the capital situation and everything in that uh, household would be the same, you know, the same parents, same hereditary, everything, but the nature or the, the characters would be very different. That's, that's why I wondered who will be deciding that form and the nature, the person or someone else, you know, maybe. but uh, auntie said that, you know, that is our karma. His, his impressions of the past birth makes him a vegetarian or a non-vegetarian. He brings along with him some vasanas. You, we have all learned about that. His vasanas decide what type of food he is going to take, even though he's born in the same family. Uh, some are spiritual because of his past birth. He must have done some punya. So the spiritual progress is going on even in this birth. Uh, that, that's how I think, uh, I don't know whether I'm correct or not. Uh, Okay, the, 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 the you know, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, Chris, uh, Sairam, brother, I'd like to thank you for the um, money auntie the past four weeks. She did a wonderful job. And I'm coming to the nature. You know, each four varnas was created by the God. So when you born on the particular varna, you have a nature and the form. The nature, for an example, if you take plastic, you cannot put it onto the fire to cook food. So you have to put the, so every varna, same thing for the tiger, you cannot give vegetables to eat. So each varna, they have some kind of attribute and they have some qualities. So the Brahmin person, I cannot ask them to go and fight, take the arms and fight against the uh, our enemies. So everyone supposed to follow according to their nature and their culture and everything uh, 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 bind together. So if we take the four Varnas, those days people don't differentiate. The reason is we are doing God's job. If you're going to do same job everyone, then it's going to be collapsed. So when we think, it's like a uh, Swami saying, if we take a chocolate, because this is Swami's body, whoever born in this, world. So we cannot differentiate. If you take a chocolate, even if you taste any part of the chocolate, leg or face or anything, same taste. Same thing. We should not differentiate the varnas, but the varnas has to be there in order to uh, have the good society and build up the society with a peaceful life. So thank you, Sairam, brother. Sairam, Sairam, brother. Thank you. Sairam, this is uh, to the question that Anandi asked. Uh, I agree with uh, Mani Bhashyamanti's uh, explanation because these are brought by each soul. When they take birth, they bring the vasanas along with them. And, <clears throat> and according to that only, their character is, characters can uh, develop. So. I agree with Bashyam auntie. Thank you, Saira. Thank you, auntie. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else would like to comment? <laughs> Maybe I will just say, yeah, but I, I concur with auntie, Mani auntie. Um, sister, the form is decided. It, it, it's fixed in one lifetime, but nature is something which we can work on. Uh, that is all sadhana is all about working on our nature, trying to improve. Um, ultimately, we have to recognize we can't do anything about our form, you know. Of course, <laughs> things like plastic surgery is there, but uh, there are limited things. But you can't change your family. Uh, you can't change the family in which you are born. You can adopt a new family, you can go to a new country. But, you know, there's only so much we can do. But uh, uh, nature is something which we can work on so that we can improve our vasanas. So all sadhana actually is 
aimed at improving the vasanas, refining ourselves, and also engage in activities which is which will bring about something better for us in the next life. Okay. And uh, just like in the examination paper, we write the question answers. We cannot demand the marks. So it all depends on the examiner uh, who will decide what marks to give us when we have done. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, uh, brother. That's an excellent uh, example. I never ever forget that one. In the form we cannot change, but the nature we can change. Yeah. Sarah, so, I just got reminded of, uh, um, I think one of the discourses of book I somewhere read, like Swami says that, you know, to answer, like, you know, to the point, uh, Anandi Andi brought, you know, everyone lives in the same family, so everything is the same, but you have different. Uh, uh, personalities some are vegetarian some are not some are very spiritual not something like that and i think when you're put in that mismatch sometimes it's also a sadhana for you to work on it so like the way of swami testing you to do that and where i, I remember at one place i think swami said everyone needs their own passports so you cannot it's not a collective effort like you have to work on your own path you have you have to have your own passport to travel you cannot travel on somebody else's so your husband's passport or your child's passport right so i think it's this it, it's similar to that situation i think thank you thank you sister Narmada. yes sister vidya please go ahead Sarah, this is so wonderful thank you thank you uh Mani Aunty. Uh, i uh, really acknowledge and like everybody else you know she did a wonderful job last two weeks brought out a lot of uh, interesting points of view. And Brother Aruno, you know, for your clarification. Um, I have a question. If the four pillars, you know, Janma, Karma, Dharma, and Brahmana, uh, Brahma, Brahma, Brahma um, out of these four, I mean, they're all equally important, but it looks like what Swami is uh, saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, is you should know your dharma. But here we are faced with um, a lot of confusion. Our family's janma, janma, that's our dharma, or is your profession and what you're doing, the work, spiritual value, because Brahma is a spiritual value. No, and, and but each work that we do has got a different, uh, dharma and your janma and your karma, what you're born into, it may also clash. Like for example, you know, my my uh, the nayas uh, in India, from what I understand, they're kshatriyas and they are also landowners, vaishyas. So they, they're landowners and they are fighters. <laughs> my great 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 grandfathers and all that, you know, they 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 fought in the kings uh, for the king. And the country, but it's uh, and then you know I'm a physician. I I I, I have that dharma as well. Uh, <laughs> so, but the spiritual qualities you're saying develop it as uh, Brahma. You know when we are dealing with the Vedas or we are doing the Swami teachings. Um, how do you reconcile that? If what you're saying, the populous is that the most important thing is you have to know your family's dharma. Because Krishna is telling Arjuna, go fight because you're a Kshatriya. Not so much as you said, the Brahmanical uh, knowledge, the spiritual knowledge, which means you don't hurt anyone. Help ever, hurt never. Right? So it's one of the maxims of the Vedas. So what is important? Sairam, thank you. A very good question, sister. I will open it up for discussion. Um, so I think others can chime in. Sister has asked a very nice question. You know, we are in situations where there's conflict, contradiction, uh, there are between dharmas which we have to adhere to. How do we navigate? I think that's sister's question, may I, as I understand. Uh, anyone who would like to throw some light based on your understanding, how you have dealt with similar situations, Saira.
So then when the Varnasa decided, the Dharmas also goes along with it. So Satriyas to fight for the Dharma, to re-establish Dharma, that is right. On that time they are killing, that is the Dharma at that time. So Dharma is goes with you, what you, what you are asked to do or what is your caste and what is your, what, what is um, the society. Yes, that's the way uh, the Dharma, you have to, for, um, um, for Sat, uh, Satriyas to fight is right. But uh, at the same time, somebody else is fighting sometimes that based on the situation, it may be not right. So um, if it's not uh, for the right reason, somebody else is fighting, that's not right. But for the right reason, it's uh, Mahabharata or all those things are uh, Maha. The everything shows uh, it was the, the fight was uh, and killed people was done for the dharma. That's how I will look at it. Thank you, Sarah. Sister, the question Sister Vijaya is asking is because she's from the Kshatriya said now what to do today? Should she join the army? I think that's the question. <laughs> so maybe I will. Uh, I maybe I will. Auntie Saku, you wanted to say something. Anyone wants to say something? Or? Um. I was thinking, Janma cannot be changed because it is a, as per our karma condition. The Janma has, has been given to different uh, to the souls in to the different varnas, and each varna has dharma. Now, uh, Kshatriya has a dharma of protecting the uh, country, but at the same time. Uh, if that person has become a physician, she has a dharma to perform for that profession she's doing because she's not doing a kshatriya job. She's doing a, a physician do, job. So the karma goes along with that and dharma also goes with that because whatever her lifetime, dharma he has to go along with uh, whatever he she has to she has chosen to do, and uh, also she has to take care of her family, uh, and also uh, she can have the brahmana brahma uh, knowledge to enrich her profession. This is what I uh, I think uh, uh, she has got a a good uh, profession where she can serve the society in many ways. Thank you, Sairam. Sairam, Auntie Sairam. Yes, Brother Thassan. So, Sairam, but it's very difficult to answer these questions nowadays because when the Kali is taught, the many Rishis went to Vyasa. Well, okay, what are we going to do now? So Vyasa said, it's very, I'm very happy because everyone can learn Vedas. Everyone can chant now. So the Kali Yuga is going to give a big opportunity for everyone to attain God easily. So if you are in a different varnas nowadays, so suppose I am in a sutra, but if, so Swami said, nowadays he can see that to the Brahmins are going to the lower level work and sutras are trying to uh, get the knowledge of the high, vis high wisdom, that kind of learning, Vedas and everything, they're trying to uh, uh, understand the spiritual side more. So if you are a sutras, if you want to do uh, uh, some uh, satriya's job, nowadays that's what is happening. But Swami is emphasizing it has to come back and the government officers, they have to establish and other learned people supposed to come, come and uh, define that varnas again. This is my answer. It's very difficult to give a good answer for this. Thank you, Saira. Thank you, brother. Any other thought from anyone? Saira, um, I have a thought on this one, maybe not necessarily answer, but uh, when dharma or karma and dharma, if it comes, comes in line, you know, side by side, uh, I believe um, Sister Vijaya's question is, uh, what takes 
precedence over the other. Uh, where the dharma should take precedence over the... Appa, uh, why did you do that? Dharma and karma? Sudaima, the counter, a paper. Oh, uh, oh, karma, it will take the precedence over the dharma. And uh, in any situation, even any, you know, le even legal situation, someone has to decide that one, you know, the, the two things comes into the similar level or in the same line. And if it cannot be easily, you know, the, uh, make a decision, then we have to set a rule, you know, the, that's the normal tendency. But in this one, I believe as a person, as an individual, that individual has to make a judgment call, you know, the, what is my dharma or whether, because that should be, first of all, both should be equal level, you know, the, if dharma, dharma goes you know, the, over the, you know, the, the janma, then that is a clear cut answer. But if it is side by side, equal status, then maybe the, as an individual, I have to make the decision, you know, the, which should take precedence over the other. That's my humble opinion, but it could be different from others. Thank you, Sairam. Thank you very much, sister. Yes, sister, I mean, so Nermata, please go ahead. Sorry, just uh, just uh, one question on top of, uh, like, uh, I, I think Sister Vijay may have asked this, but like adding on to it, you know, she mentioned how Nayars were uh, Chatriyas and then throughout the life, they evolved into landowners, which is Vaishyas, and she's a physician now. So the question I have is that, uh, like going back to when Swami says, we have to restore how it was. So is it okay if we choose a different profession in the same uh, birth? If you were birth, like, let's say if I was born as a, in the Chatriya family, is it okay for me to choose a different profession, which is business, for example, or, or legal matter or something like that? Is it, am I going against my dharma? I'm not sure if that is something that Sister Vijaya asked, but I, it's a question that I thought listening to everyone speaking. Am I breaching my dharma or going out of the box or something like that? Okay, thank you, sister. Um, sister Aruna, you have something to say. Brother, um, I always believe that uh, your dharma goes with your varna, but whatever the role that you are doing it, that you have to discharge your role according to your, the duties that's given to you. So your dharma has always goes with your I think it's Varna. That's what how Swami has defined. That's how I will take it. Thank you, Saira. Saira, Sister Saira. Um, Sister Vijaya, you have something to say? Please go ahead. No, um, this is a very difficult question, actually. What's, and Swami is saying something here to make us think even more. Yes. As a student of the Vedas, you know, and, 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 the, and the Vedas is encompassed by what Swami says, help ever, hurt never, and love all, serve all. I took it as my life purpose, that my dharma and who I was, and I do know I have Kshatriya values. I do know when I had to fight, I will fight. I'm very much into injustice or protecting my kids. So, so many battles, even at the verge of dying and death from cancer, you know, I will fight for the family and what I think is right. So I do know I have those tendencies, the vasanas in me. So I must have been some fighter somewhere. And But the, the question then becomes, if I take the Brahmana knowledge, the Brahma knowledge, the love all, serve all, and help ever, hurt never, you know, it becomes a, a very important because I cannot fight an injustice with, you know, hitting somebody or, or not hitting legally even. And I've been in many situations where, you know, I couldn't do that. So Swami has given this, this, you know, it's a quandary because your janma and your dharma may say you got to fight, you got to do what is right and correct an injustice. But on the other hand, you cannot hurt somebody. So it's, a, it, it, it's for, I think you're correct, but I don't know. We all have to look into our own lives, you know, how we are being true to Swami um, and what is important to all of us. That's one question. And then the other, the other very important point is, uh, 
why is Swami saying this? That we should protect the Dharma, that Krishna said that. And Swami is saying this in, in the Kali Yuga, in the present situation. So it is an important question to know what Swami means by that. So it's not easy. <laughs> That's all I want to say. Sairam, thank you. Sairam, Sairam. Um, I, I think, you know, we will not be able to have conclusive uh, uh, discussion on this because it's a lifelong search for what is the right dharma um, number one number two uh, the what you are talking about is called dharma sankata when two dharmas which are both right then they are opposed to each other or they contradict each other that uh, the technical term for this is dharma sankata one dharma tripping over the other dharma so swami would say pick the higher one uh, so that is simple and then if we actually for, to study dharma swami has written an entire vahini we should study that so where he says before you go into varna ashrama dharma you should start from what is your atma dharma then you go to what's called purusha dharma and stri dharma on top of that you layer on the varna ashrama dharma varna dharma and on top of that is ashrama dharma and on top of that, any other dharma you want to layer on. So the thing is, we need to go for the fundamental. At all points, we should know, remember that we are the Atman. Number two, then we should see if you are following the Purusha Dharma, you have to follow the Purusha Dharma. And then you go add on to that uh, your uh, Varna Dharma and then Ashram Dharma. That's the way Swami would so. So there's a hierarchy. I think. Uh, um, Swami will guide us. If we are confused, we should seek advice from him. I think that's my understanding. And I think the most important thing is we should be content with whatever situation we are put in and we do the best we can. Because we should understand Arjuna was being told by Krishna, cultivate all this and then fight. <laughs> and he fought. <laughs> Mama Anismara Yuddhacha, you know, think of me and fight. You know, so. Um, Arjuna was in that serious situation. We have none of us, I think others may not be Kshatriyas. But Kshatriya means one who removes sorrow. That is the real meaning of Kshatriya uh, from people. So even a doctor can be... Uh, and we, the reality is if you go into the armed forces, there there will be teachers, there will be doctors. Uh, every, there, so there's an... Uh, in every varna, there are aspects of this. So we can pick something, and I think we had to find our own, uh, you know, path. And with Swami's guidance, I am sure everyone is already doing it, and will continue to do with a bit more awareness. I think that's the whole idea. Is Krishna is telling because that time also there were problem. People were mixing up. Drona was a Brahmin; he was fighting. Mm. Okay. So there, there were issues there also. So let's. Uh, so same problems existed then also. We think we didn't exist. It, it existed. Um, so there were problems then also, and that's why Krishna is mentioning it. Vyasa is mentioning it. Now Swami is mentioning it again. So the, every all the problems in this world will not go away, but it is for each one of us uh, to see how we navigate our lives with Swami's teachings. I think that's my understanding, sister. Uh, world will not change. Sairam, please go ahead. Sairam, it also, we are living in a world, we are all interconnected. My, um, my understanding, Brother Aruna, thank you so much for that explanation. Thank you. Uh, it's, uh, I watched the war in, uh, we all are watching the war in Ukraine and Russia, right? And you think when the Russians are told, the soldiers are told to attack Ukraine, as a Kshatriya, I'm, I'm interested in that because that to me, as a judgment, is a dharmic to whatever. Whatever, I'm not putting this as a right or wrong, good or bad or anything. And it's a tendency for me to judge. And who am I to judge? I don't know the bigger picture what Swami wants in this, but, you know, it's a, uh, it's, it's, I don't know whether it's false placement of compassion for the Ukrainians who are suffering 
you know, who are, whose cities have been bombed. And I look at, you know, everything we live in the world here also can happen anytime. You know, it doesn't mean, oh, I'm here in the US and I'll be safe. No, it doesn't mean that. And the thing is that the judgment is causing a lot of, um, is causing a lot of, uh, um, you know, sadness, sorrow. And I look at it and I say, okay, Swami has, you know, the Ati Rudrams and the, the practice the Rudram every day, the, 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 the Gayatri every day, and you can do it and you can send the prayers to people, right? It's, uh, it's very hard to not pass a judgment and the judging tendencies, but at the same time, you know, you feel the injustice of it all. Everywhere there is injustice, I agree. But how do you deal with it? The, 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 you said a very nice uh, 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 learning point today here, the uh, Dharma Sankata, the conflicts in the Dharma. And when you watch the world, how we cannot judge other people, even when you think, oh my God, what are they doing? You know. So anyway, Sairam, thank you so much. Sairam, sister. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's, it's a lifelong journey. Uh, the, there has been there is bomb being dropped every single day yes. as long as human beings have lived uh, that's the reality it is just that uh, the media may get uh, you know attend pay attention in some cases but uh, the bombs are being dropped in the past 70 80 years when since then the bomb have been around uh, people are bombing or shooting or throwing grenades somewhere in this world it is just that uh, uh, there's no much attention going on, uh, but that's reality. But uh, Swami himself said same thing. He said this will be there forever, so don't spend time, <laughs> don't worry about it. You do what you can uh, in your own circumstances. Uh, that's all we can do. It's very difficult to you know decide whether somebody's right or wrong, what they are doing, how they are doing. Impossible because their situation, their you know their own maturity, their own growth. In the ultimate analysis, if we are troubled, you know, don't you think God is not troubled? Uh, see, he will be more troubled, if at all. Uh, but the thing is, he, 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 for him, if someone loses life, it is not a big thing. He is not losing himself. His Atman is not lost. The body is gone. And I think it's a lesson. It's a lesson for different people in different ways. We really don't understand. Um, that's all I can say. And I think, see, to, it's about four or three. Uh, today being, uh, you know, uh, Aradhana day, you know, lots of activities. So I think in another 10 minutes, we'll close if it's okay. Um, if maybe if you want, anyone wants to say something, I'm sorry, I took up two. Too, I talk too much, I guess, today. Sorry about it. Brother, Sairam, you have mentioned about the Satriyas, the, they are removed. They will, they will, you will be looking at, and, at them as a remove of sorrow, right? By, uh, likewise, every Varnas has a meaning for it, and they have created for a welfare of humanity. So, every Varnas Dharma, we have to, uh, like, uh, we have to respect. That's how the, the Varna system, right? Says. Yes. Thank you. Saira. Saira. Uncle, just ask, like, yes, do you, yes. can you also go through the other Varnas? If, like, if there's another deeper meaning to it? Yes, that's what I was about to ask. <laughs> if that, if it's a remove of sorrow for Satriyas, for what is the for other, other ones? The best is to read Dharma Vaini. I don't want to, you know, speak of from memory. If it's okay, we will. Uh, I will send you the uh, relevant extra excerpt, Kalyani. Why don't we discuss it? You know, so that just uh, we will not dwell on it too much. I will send you the excerpt from Dharma Vahini. Um, there's one peri a place where Swami is explaining. Uh, I think it's the second last chapter, if I remember. Uh, but uh, I think we will just uh, discuss there. You know, I don't want uh, you know. Brother Aruno said, you know, that it should not be, you know, we all, we all coming to study what Swami said, you know, so I don't want to say out of me, from my memory, my memory is, uh, I, you know, there are pieces which I remember clearly, but it's better we all read, because I would have only captured what, you know, caught my imagination, 
and uh, so I think I, we should read Swami's words. I will send you the uh, uh, section and you can put it on a slide and we can discuss. If it's okay. Right on, brother. It's coming on the next chapters, I think. If the next pages all come. Yeah, Swami is also, there is, there is a slide. Uh, there is, so why don't we, um, I will send it, that, uh, sorry, Kalyani, and then um, see, uh, you have it ready and then we will see, okay? Uh, maybe you know it's okay. It's a slight digression into Dharmavani and then come back. Coming back is okay. Uh, so that's fine. Because I'm, it, 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 I'm sorry, just Narmata's question. I don't know if um, about like if you do something outside of your varna, is that a breach of your dharma or your varna dharma? If you do something outside of your like um narmata was asking if she's for example kshatriya and she decides to do something like in the modern age decides to go into the business field like is that something you should really like worry about or swami will say you know why are you wasting time <laughs> see the thing is we we all we should understand we all go and earn our livelihood for deha rakshartha you know swami will say you know bhiksha <laughs> Uh, just for body, just to protect the body. That's all. If we think we are saving the world, then you know that is that is something which we have to really deal with. We are not, you know, we are not uh, looking after the world. God is looking after the world. He will give us some work, and we can do a little bit. So um, I think Swami will say, if you do look after yourself, you are one less work for me. You know, <laughs> it is one less problem for him. So I think that is the best we can do. Um, so I think um, in terms of what we like to do, uh, if see, we are, by circumstances, we have put in some job. Let us do that job very well. And then if, if the world has to change and you are given some other job, that be, so be it. We should not go looking, seeking is my understanding. Because that is a sense of contentment, you know. God has placed me here today. I will just do this job. Uh, because um, I remember, you know, uh, um, beside, you know, my, my, when my brother had gone once, Swami asked, what, what, where are you working? He said, uh, he, Swami, I am working. He said, okay, do your job very well. Swami didn't ask, what is your title? You should do something and nothing. He said, do your job well. That's where I have placed you. Just do it well. So do it well mean without looking here or there. You know, I, ideally we should not. But the Western world, you know, will try to say, you know, you need to, find, you know, get you know your full capacity, you know, full potential. You should be realizing all that. Our full potential is atmic potential. Swami will say, realize that. Instead of that, you are going after you know worldly uh, potentials. You will say, go for atmic potential. That is the maximum. Atma Vidya Vidya Naam Swami will again and again say. So go for that. That is the fullest potential. That you become God. That is that is the only thing Swami will. Uh, other than he will say you are wasting too much time. <laughs> I, you know on the same topic. You know when I want to do PhD and teach, Swami said PhD waste of time. Otherwise I was looking. Swami others are doing. What about them? <laughs> But you know, it's a waste of time for me. That's the way I understood. Uh, so, so okay, Swami. You know, you should ac We should accept wherever He God has placed us today. Uh, today we are in one place. I think as Sadaka, wherever we are placed today, just let's do it well and just do work on Atma Vidya. I think that's what I think Swami will appreciate. In my understanding, I don't think that is. <laughs> You know, because you asked me the question, I answered, but others also may have other I hope uh, Narmada I answered your question reasonably okay. Um, if anyone else has, please. So, Sairam brother, Sister Vijaya's question, the, the walk, uh, even if we take Maka Parada and uh, a beeman was uh, hitting uh, the three one has thigh, it was uh, very painful. And Lord Krishna uh, experienced that pain. Same thing, this world is God's body. If we are anywhere is hurting, anything happening like this was, is hurt, 
about feelings and and he are he and he taught the people how to live in the society and the people don't want to listen it really hurt the board thank you saira saira for 10 should we read another paragraph and go or just stop i think sister aruna is shaking her head too much already is it philosophy <laughs> no siram brother we can read it but uh, i i know you are no to, discussion to, no discussion today I, the only reason i thought people can contemplate on it for a week and come okay, back okay 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 brother siram we, we, we will not discuss okay siram brother next page i think next page. okay saram okay the four varnas are like the limbs of the same body they have evolved out of the same divine body the brahmins from the face the kshatriyas from the hands the vaishyas from the thighs and the sudras from the feet of course these expressions have a deeper inner meaning those who teach like the guru the principles of jnana are the voice they are the brahmins the strong armed bear the burden of the earth they are the kshatriyas the social edifice uh, is upheld as on pillars by the vaishyas and so they are figuratively described as eman emanating from the thighs of the divine person like the feet that are engaged in going about on all kinds of activities the sutras are ever engaged in the basic task of the society the peace and happiness of society will suffer even if a single varna is slack in its task and all varnas are worthwhile and valuable as all limbs are important there's no higher or lower hatred and rivalry in society are as harmful as stoppage of work by all the limbs in anger against the stomach <laughs> yeah Uh, there's a nice story which swami said maybe i will just tell the story and then we'll close if it's okay yeah. swami says um, uh, the hands and the legs and all no one day they all talked among themselves and they said you know this tongue it's having a good time we are all working so that the tongue enjoys it tastes good food we are unable to taste it so why should we bother let us you know let us go on a strike so the hand said you know we are not going to feed you you know we don't even get credit we are only doing the work and you are having a good time and then stomach is also very very happy because of you you both are enjoying and what about us we are doing all the hard work so they said we are going to stop so the legs didn't say they didn't cooperate so the person couldn't walk the hands were not cooperating the the person couldn't eat and uh, one day passed one week passed two weeks passed three weeks passed the entire body was now weak because the hands didn't realize that by feeding the mouth they are also getting what they need Swami said, "This is what everyone in the society should understand." So that's that. You know, harmful stoppage of work by uh, stomach, anger towards the stomach. So with that uh, story, I will stop here, uh, and we'll close with Samastha Loka, and we will continue. So that uh, let all the all the limbs cooperate and feed you nicely today also, and for the next seven days, and we'll meet again. Sai Ram, everyone. will close it samastha loka om samastha loka sukhino bhavantu samastha loka sukhino bhavantu samastha loka sukhino bhavantu om shanti 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 hi jai sai ram jai sai ram Yes, I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.